evening from here to to you and thank you so much for coming on our february ama here on the common stack uh every month we come around talk about ask me anything and this month it's our commons month we also decided this month to go with um uh, bear in mind of tec's commons upgrade so our conversations today will be on tec commons upgrade we've invited uh, Angela, who is from the Token Engineering uh, Academy and also part, court, part of the court, Token Engineering community. So excited and very warm to have you join us, Angela. Also, we are going to have on the panel Gideon, who all participated in uh, the Token Engineering Commons Upgrade. He's also a hatcher with TEC. We have YGG, um, he's the steward of the labs, and Tam is a steward with uh, TEC and Livia is also joining us. Uh, she is the steward of soft gov and culture. So it's safe to say we have the whole token engineering community right here. And that's a very strong thing to do. So thank you guys for coming on. And um, to start, let, let me begin with you, Tam. How does it feel participating to design an economy? Sure. Yeah, it was a. Um... It was a novel experience. Uh, it is really the first time that I'd say uh, I was so intimately involved with the parameters for um, uh, modules like the augmented bonding curve. Uh, that was a um, big learning experience, actually. And I'd love to hear some of the other people's perspective on their experience, too. Now, so talking about experience, what was the experience like? What, what lessons? Have you learned participating in the Commons Upgrade? So it's hard <laughs> and it takes a lot of time. And the, the learning curve is actually quite steep. You know, it's uh, a lot of concepts that you have to actually learn before you can start to play around with them, interdependencies between different um, parameters. And then there's a lot of thinking about outcomes and, um, you know, changes and how small changes can have like butterfly effect long outcomes and then different outcomes so there's there's a lot of thinking actually it really engages you it really engaged me like intellectually uh trying to consider how to um optimize for certain factors without other factors becoming um detrimental to the to the uh economy and culture that we're trying to build and um quick one about the network we're trying to build you made mention of that uh, the beginning story so tec came out of common stack um could you just like um explain how sure. tec was and um, clarify where common stack is and where tec is in the scope of things sure um so common stack has been researching and developing and building um, tools for a cultural build and a technical build. And the cultural build, as you know, Livia has been um, really leading. Um, and uh, the technical build has also been led by, you know, it's, it's sort of an alliance of many different organizations, right? So One Hive and Common Stack uh, partnered to actually develop these tools. Um, the uh, the DAO itself, the Hatch DAO, and then the Commons Upgrade, which was Augmented Bonding Curve, Conviction Voting, and uh, TAO Voting. And um, these, as these became available, um, I think there's actually people in this room that are better qualified than me to tell the origin story. Um, but it was a combination of uh, people from Common Stack, uh, Griff Green, Jeff, Zargum, Angela from uh, Token Engineering Community and Token Engineering Academy, who um, wanted to use these tools to launch a Commons to support token engineering uh, initiatives. And so the token engineering community used these design patterns to create this commons for token engineering and to support token engineering initiatives. Uh, Angela, we're talking token engineering and as a token engineer, what new insights would you say you gained from designing the economy of the TEC? I mean, I was not actively participating in designing the exact economy. I was rather observing the evolution of the system from day one, I'd say. And I think, but there were some really exciting learnings for me, um, mainly in the process, because I think the TEC example is really 
trailblazing how a DAO, a community, can develop its own economy. And this is something DAOs, many DAOs are currently exploring. And there we have challenges like the general understanding is, okay, um, a to designing a token economy is um, some people, some smart people are writing a white paper. Um, or, um, oh, this is about math. Okay, it's certainly not for me. So we'll have experts to deal with that. And I think, um, so now this raised, this example of TC actually raised a lot of conversations also in the TE Academy, in the DAO reward systems uh, research group now. Wait, DAOs and the stakeholder in DAOs should be actively involved in designing and in the evolution of an economy, of a DAO's own economy. And I think TEC provides some really great examples how this collaboration and participation can happen. And there's certainly way more to explore. So we see now, we see more and more parameter working groups as we had it in TEC, also in other DAOs or working groups around the around key questions in, in the next iteration of the next step in the evolution of a token economy. And this is becoming more and more visible. And there are, I think, already um, good and new and innovative ways how to participate as a regular stakeholder in the design of an economy. And since we want to have these new, sustainable, fair, accessible um, economies. This is something that is just, I'm happy to see. And this is, uh, I think, also something where, can, where we as Token Engineering Commons can um, support, uh, be innovative, spread the word, train, uh, showcase how this might take place and, and how other DAOs can adopt these principles. We, we, we have um, a clear picture and for anyone joining the conversation can understand when we talk about token engineering commons and how it is. What exactly is token engineering? Okay, token engineering is the design, verification and optimization of crypto economic systems led and driven by tokens. So you have the tokens as the atomic unit in a system this typically is um, the, the native token in an ecosystem, in a DAO, and then you design the mechanisms around it. So what can you do with this token? What's the, what's the incentive in the system? How can you participate? What are the rewards in participation? And that's what token engineering is all about, roughly speaking. And it's a crypto native discipline. So it's um, probably the youngest engineering discipline after software engineering was established in the 1960s. Um, token engineering was first mentioned in 2018 by Trent McConaughey Ocean Protocol. And since then, our community um, is trying to shape and progress this discipline, gathering researchers, a body of theory and practice, developing new frameworks and tools. Um, to support and yeah, actually bring token engineering to life as a discipline and as a community. So, why is um, the commons upgrade uh, important to token engineering? Yeah, one hundred percent. So, uh, I mean, this is now first time uh, we have our own token economy in place. Uh, first time everybody can participate in how to further develop this community, TE Commons. Uh, everybody's able to invest in our mission and vision. So this is absolutely uh, the great next step for uh, TE Commons and with many more to come. Congratulations. And um, <laughs> it will be interesting to read, like you said, you observed from afar. So it will be interesting to read all your observations and lessons someday. Uh, Livia, you are part of um, those that participated. You participated in designing an economy. So, quick one is: How proud are you? <laughs> well, I I am very proud of the TC as a whole, like the TC community. 
I didn't actually, um, well, I co-designed a proposal with Juanca and Mitch. That was the uh, Ostrom's baby. And I think the process of going to all of the debates and looking at what was proposed and learning, like it was an infinite learning process. Um, I think that's why I didn't want to jump in and propose something totally of my own because I felt like every design that was there was representing me in some way. And I was trying to understand what made more sense. And I think having this wholesome design pattern, right? It was not like the bonding curve, having one proposal and then conviction voting being in another proposal. We were trying to design a whole uh, set for this economy. And this is something I don't know if it was the best way or not if it was too complicated and it should have been broken down. But for me, having this uh, whole picture was really helpful to understand how things work in relation of one another and how one parameter affects the other. And this just gives a, a hint of what a complex system is, right? Like so many things interconnected and and they all have an impact on each other. So I think that was very um, amazing to have that that overview and that knowledge spread to the community. I think you're muted. You're muted, Nikini. For notice. So uh, I, I, you're talking about that. So the question is, would you say there were some challenges SoftGov uh, faced in the Commons upgrade? And if they were, um, how were you able to overcome them, uh, you know, looking at it from where you're coming from? Yeah, um, that's a good question because I think um i've been i've been questioning myself what is soft governance like what is soft governance and what is hard governance like why why do we have this view that something that is on chain is hard and then something that is uh being discussed between people and worked on is soft and how can we have more of a balance between those two sensations maybe and um I think I think there are always cultural challenges and and governance, even if it happens on chain, is still happening through the decisions that people are making based on the relationships that they have and, and the cultural background that they bring in. So I think making something of this magnitude was definitely challenging for us all as a, as community to move all together there is this constant tension between efficiency and inclus in inclusivity like how can we make everyone participate in something uh and still make this um and still make the project move at a pace that is satis that, that is satisfying to our mission so i think this awareness of Time, when we think about time, more of the quality of what is being made rather than how fast we are arriving at a certain goal, I think we get much more out of it. So I think culturally we achieved a much more successful place than if we were being purely efficient. Well, I hope that well. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gideon, you participated in, in, in that. So let's begin with how did it feel being part of that process, designing an economy? Yeah, for me, it felt revolutionary. I mean, I, I, I have less time in this whole um, process in terms of experience. And so, um, you know, unlike Libby, Libby was like smart, she partnered with people and I actually put together a proposal of some parameters 
and I had no idea what I was doing, honestly. Like, I, I mean, I, I used it as an experiment um, in how to learn about this stuff. And um, just doing that was, was amazing. Um, I, I think, you know, I mean, my sense is that, um, you know, we are just in the baby steps of doing something very, very important. Like, this is the future of how economies and organizations are going to be designed. Like, this, I'm so sure of that. I'm just so sure of that. So, um, you know, it can be done like it's been done in the past where you have just like, you know, a small handful of people doing it, like the experts doing it. But what we're trying to do here is change that whole paradigm and open it up. And so what was so amazing to me was like the patience of Griff and all the other folks who were working on the parameters um, in teaching people um, by hand. It was like, it was, this was like, like craft work so you know this is like before the age of um mass uh, you know mass production or like scaling stuff with this is like still in the crafts era where we were you know they were sitting down with me and a bunch of other people and going like, oh no you can't really you know like we'd have these these sessions where we would jam on on parameters design and get you know give feedback and things like that and it was it was amazing um to see that process and to see, I mean, for me, it feels like, you know, people worry about centralization um, on, and all these other fronts. And I think that there is a, a concern about centralization that um, some people are talking about, but it's like the centralization of knowledge and expertise. And so what I think we were witnessing is some of the first attempts to decentralize that knowledge, that, that how to build um, these new these new micro economies, these new organizations, and how to involve people in that work. Um, so it was a little bit messy, um, but there's I don't think there's any other way it could have been um, than a little bit messy. And actually, I I was really proud. I mean, I didn't design any of that, um, but I was really proud of this community in terms of the commitment it had to to doing that in a democratic and very transparent process. I thought it was amazing. Oh, so if we were to take you back, what was it about TEC that inspired you to come on board? And that you didn't just come on board, you came on and you've been very active all through. I mean, honestly, I, I, I feel like... Um, how do I say this in a short story? Um, I, I uh, came out of tech, but it was like the old tech, right? And, um, and then I went and, and worked on like the environment and trying to help the environmental movement use technology. And, you know, I just kind of had this feeling like, wow, this is, you know, every time that an environmental organization would like solve some problem, then like a year would go by and business would come in and like change you know, change the laws again, right? And I just thought, well, this is just not working. So I started writing about mission-driven, stakeholder-centric organizations. And I was writing about this stuff, and yet I was missing the tool set. Like, I didn't know, I, I was writing about token engineering, but I didn't know that token engineering existed. And so I was like, you know, writing about this stuff. It was kind of far-fetched ideas. And then as I started to get more exposed, actually, Colony was the first, um, Jack DeRose was the first person I talked to about this. And, um, and so, you know, I slowly started getting into it. And then when I ran into um, TEC um, and kind of the cluster of, you know, Common Stack and, you know, Giveth and others, I just, it's like a light bulb went off. And I was like, this is really the future of economic design. And this is the future of organizations. And this is how we're going to build a new civilization. Like, I, I really believe that. I mean, that's why I care so much about this. So. I think that, you know, that or if there's a place where I'm going to invest, it's in this entity that is um, helping to advocate for not just token engineering as a science, but like as a movement. You know, what does this mean? How do we think holistically about culture and, and, and all these other factors that need to go into this discipline? That's why. Thank you. Well, that was good and quite enlightening. And thanks for sharing your thoughts. Why did you go lessons on joining to design an economy? So quick one, I like I ask everyone, how does it feel for you? What were the highlights for you during the Commons upgrade? 
Hey, was that was that one for me? Yes. Awesome. Actually. Yeah, it's um, thrilling. Honestly, it's like we've we're all these rocket scientists, you know, who have been theorizing the physics <laughs> uh, for years. I mean, I, I think in 2019 I started tracking the writings of Jeff Emmett uh, on bonding curves and led me to. Uh, um, Simon's work uh, and just a lot of the a lot of mathematicians behind the scenes, which I got to sort of do some archaeology work and survey that along with SEM towards the Commons upgrade. We went back through the whole history of bonding curves and were able to find different sort of mathematical approaches that uh, people had taken and compile them all together towards creating the models and sort of serving the dev team. So. It felt like we were just a bunch of sort of physicists who had been theorizing, you know, or, or token engineers, really, who had been theorizing about this for so long. But now we're actually building the rocket, we're climbing in the ship, we're fueling the tanks with gasoline, and it's a democratic process. So we're saying, okay, how, you know, how do we parameter, parameterize these engines? Like, <laughs> how, how high do we want to launch? Where do we want to get to? Um, and to go through that process and to see the community just activate in such an organic way also you know just um i think there's a certain level of faith to this where people just show up when you need them that's the beauty of <laughs> of working working in the open um and just having trust in people and trust in the world and sometimes there's just some crazy problem that you can't figure out and next thing you know someone pops into the discord server <laughs> And starts writing out formulas or, you know, explaining, breaking things down so that people can understand it. Uh, it was a truly incredible process to have gone through that. But uh, at the same time, something I, I the, the one thing that's really ringing in my ear that I wanted to make sure I can bring up in this AMA is this concept of, like, everything we've achieved so far, all of this progress... It's really only setting the initial conditions. <laughs> that, that's all we've done is we've established the economy, right? This is like day zero of of everything being online and and working and activated. So it's only only the beginning, and I think the real juicy part is going to be seeing this whole machine in motion and how people use it and how people govern it and all the challenges that I'm sure we'll be facing in the future, but those are the learning opportunities. Uh, so yeah, it was thrilling, if I could say one word. It was and just really rewarding, too, to have that sort of level of faith from an early on period, like read, to read the articles and see some of the math formulas and just have that feeling like, hey, I think this could actually work. And then you start to see other people join in, and, and it just keeps moving forward, and eventually it launches and it works. <laughs> so extremely rewarding. In, in the spirit of breaking things down, yeah. what are token economic systems that um, were deployed for the commons upgrade? Yeah. 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 So primarily the bonding curve and conviction voting. Uh, okay. Now, this, this is the first time that these two mechanisms have been deployed. Um, in a coupled fashion. So, like Livy was talking about, the parameters decisions for these mechanisms were, were we took a holistic, integrated approach where we're thinking about how all these primitives uh, exist in relation to each other. So, e bonding curves have been launched in the past. Uh, conviction voting has been used in the past, of course. But I think this holistic uh, approach of putting these mechanisms together is uh, unique to the TEC. Thank you so much, uh, YG. Just a quick reminder to everyone listening. So you, if you have a question or something you would want to you know, put forward a clarification, uh, you're allowed to flash your mic and would allow you to speak. And if you want to drop uh, questions, please do that at the community channel and drop your questions and then um, would also um, anchor these questions. So I I'm coming back to you, Tam, now. Let's talk about the how TEC is applying the common stack design pattern, like with everything we've learned, with the commons upgrade, the integration, the birth. How is TEC applying this? And uh, you could also give us some examples of cases where this has been applied. 
Yeah. Uh, cool. So I'd say the, um, you know, if we, if we talk about like, there's, there's many different ways I, I can approach this, right? There's so many things, right? There's so many parts. There's these like the technical and the cultural build. And then there's this like how things um, are um, bootstrapped, right? It was like really a community that had to come together to decide that this was something that they wanted to do together. Um, and that's sort of where collaborative economics come into play. Um, there's many different, uh, I would say, research and tools that Common Stack is working on developing and building. And for the, the TEC, I think it's really mostly this, um, you know, the technical build was probably the, the more dry, right? It's these novel um, crypto economic primitives, right? So the augmented bonding curve. So there's been lots of bonding curves as YGG said, but this is specifically augmented so that some part of the transactions against the bonding curve will go into a commons pool that can serve the mission of that community. Uh, so that uh, it's the first one to ever have existed. So it's really exciting that uh, the TEC was, uh, was the community to do it. Um, and of course, conviction voting, uh, and we're watching it now, you know, it's been a few weeks now, and we're watching proposals slowly grow in conviction, you know, and it's like watching the paint dry sometimes. It's like, there's, you know, you, you need to, you need to really have a lot of the community support a proposal strongly to get it passed. Um, the token and engineering academies proposal was the very first proposal to pass for the TE fundamentals course. And that just, whew, almost flew through conviction. We were all surprised by how fast uh, it went through. So it, we're like all this empirical data that we're collecting now about how these things are working, not on paper, but in practice is such a, a key part of being able to use this in other communities and uh, help other communities launch their own commons. So the, so this, the, yeah, go ahead. Did you no, want you to say? No, no, no. So no so that, that's just like the, the technical part is almost the dry part, but it's not because it's so fascinating to so many people. So to understand, even to understand how a bonding curve works, I mean, it's, it's not something I think that most people experience or think about. And to have an opportunity to have it spoon fed so clearly with people ready and willing to answer your questions is actually really exciting because these are the things that people are going to need to understand, that my children are going to need to understand to operate in the world, I think. And then uh, from the cultural side, of course, Livia's, uh, you know, better to speak about that. But I just want to say there's so many things that we've learned about building the culture based on Eleanor Ostrom's principles. Like, how do you take these principles that she derived from field observations and then have a community internalize them so that they're operating naturally in these? Um, and, you know, there's many things that are going really well, some things that are ripe for change. Um, um, you know, there's rituals and practices and coordination and stewardship and, you know, conflict resolution and transformation. There's so much that goes into the community and social layers of a, uh, of a DAO or of a, a commons um, that is really the lifeblood of that commons. So uh, I'd say that those are two of the components and then the design for actually deploying and developing these as this this idea that the community like foundationally it's the community who should decide um or should have say into the decisions that impact their economy and uh espe especially um Right, making sure that people are actually informed. Like the the result of this is not to have everyone be, you know, master token engineers or have masters in economies. Just that the population that's now going to make decisions, that's going to vote, that holds the tokens. So these token holders, initially the hatchers, will actually understand how the economy works, so that as they're voting, they have a level up. They level up in understanding about um, about the choices and what they should vote for. I hope that answered your question. Well. Um, congratulations on your recent publication with Grave on collaborative economics. And in it, yeah, I remember we were talking about Amy, you talked about um, the, the commons upgrade as uh, collaborative economics in action. Like, this is it. Let's talk about the challenges you encountered during that research and um, how that has um, worked out for you. Um, I might shy away from the word challenges, but I would say that like what fascinated me the most was really understanding how little 
we say we have. I mean, I think the financial crisis was evidence that there's definitely some problems in the global economy and the, the decision makers who are making decisions about the economy and how uh, how little um, voice people actually have. <laughs> you know, I think in, in democratic uh, nations, we assume that um, we vote in, um, you know, we vote in our representatives and our representatives will re you know, represent us in all different aspects, but it sort of stops short of monetary policy. Um, the, so there's some interesting, there's an interesting learning I had there actually that, um, you know, it's, it's um, very insider actually. And uh, when you look at the way at least the US um, Fed is designed, it's mostly bankers voting bankers in. And it seems as if perhaps, uh, you know, for smaller economies, <laughs> where there's a community that is uh, purpose-driven, there's a better way to do it than that. Right, thank you, um, Tam, for clarification. So for those of you who have not uh, got, gotten a copy of that, please go check out the Collaborative Economics. Um, it, uh, it's also on our YouTube channel, so you get to read of that piece that Tam wrote on that. Um, okay, I'm going to quickly go off video because it's dark here and it's getting darker later, so I could stay on voice if you guys don't mind. So, um, Angela, let's talk about why was the Commons Upgrade launch different from every other thing token engineering as a community has done, and more importantly, every other launch TEC I've ever had. Um, yeah, some, um, some observations from my side. First, I, re I remember when I first uh, was invited to a parameter party. And I thought, what? <laughs> What's that? What's a parameter party? And then I went there and there were plenty. So it was just um, an open invitation to everyone and it was super accessible. And then we just went together over the potential parameter design, what that means, what, what are the open questions here. And... And this was, I mean, it was a little bit mixed. For me also, it was a learning journey because I've experienced token engineering myself as something that um, is sometimes hard to follow, right? So uh, talking complex stuff uh, in, in words, in a language that, that is not really accessible and um, a lot of the main jargon and then seeing a parameter so this was uh, totally unusual. And then when we finished the call, I was like, this is really amazing because actually you can approach questions like this in, in, in this way. And you, it's not that, a, a, let's say, a, just a normal person can't understand economies. It's just we have to take efforts. We have to take efforts in, I wouldn't even say education, I would say in make, make everything behind it. So all the, the interconnectedness of, um, of aspects, um, not even parameter, but what's going on, uh, how we design the bonding curve will have an impact on the price and how is this related or how we design the vesting um, periods will have an impact on uh, the, the, the price pressure. And, and this is something, this is not impossible to understand for everybody. This is something you can explain. You just have to do it. You just have to make this a mission for a commons to, um, to have a conversation and to have a joint decision making and to have a have an opinion and an open discussion on it. And I think if we just this whole vision of design your own economies, uh, a purpose driven economy, then there's no way around it. And for me, this is one of the most innovative aspects in Web3 that an economy and how this economy is designed is not just imposed on us and it just happens and we are just can be victims or it's just like weather no it's something we can design consciously and we and we should and uh that's that's for me was and, and but then the question how to do it and then the commons upgrade was just such a great example and and really 
a, a leap forward. Oh, wow. Uh, Olivia, could you uh, speak more on the co-creation pr process that went into the Commons upgrade? You said on the co-creation process? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool experiment that worked really well because we started with the mission, vision, and values using a similar process. So actually the first call we had in the TC, um, I mean, when we started the cultural build was uh, we token engineers and uh, Angelo's present too, of how, what was our mission? What was our vision? Uh, how do we want it to operate? What values do we stand by for? And we had this Miro session that was this collaborative um input from uh all of those amazing people on what would be this community that was like being born and that process was so nice that we wanted to have a final input from that that would make sense for everyone but then it was not that easy it was hard to get to a final solution like how from all of this information that it's in this mural board, we can get to one final statement. So we had that process kind of on this cord, but it was a bit like wonky. And then, and then we found out about token log uh, months after. So token log is this uh, curation tool that allows you to prioritize GitHub issues using uh, token token weighted voting. So. This was the, the process we were needing to make sense of that first session. So we thought, oh, there's many new members in the community. How can we involve them in this new iteration of the mission, vision, and values based on, on, on that like first one we had? So we had the whole community engage and also come from kind of a holistic approach of designing the three of them together instead of just the mission or just the vision so it was you had to design the mission vision and values and submit your proposal and then all of those proposals were curated on token log until we got to uh, final top number of people like four or five proposals i think it was and then from that we um we polished them more. So we had a few iterations until we got to our final step for uh, the mission, vision, and values. And, and we thought this would be a perfect example to use in the params because now we're calling this process crowd decision-making. So it's, it's a process where many, many proposals are welcome. Like you want the max number of proposals possible. So you want to optimize participation and then from there curate. And then for uh, the commons upgrade now, we had a new layer of improvement of this process that was snapshot um, quadratic rank choice voting. So because token log gives you this curation of the top proposals, but it doesn't give you, it's not easy to find um, final winner, like a very clear first place. So we change, we, we moved the top proposals from token log from the commons upgrade to snapshot. And then through quadratic ring choice voting, we could see, uh, what were the favorite proposals in order. And that's how we got to the result of the Goldilocks proposal. Oh, it sounds very fascinating. Uh, for for you, Gideon, how do you see this process, like uh, Livia explained, potentially affecting uh, other communities? Well, um, I'm hoping that this will be, you know, something like this will be the design process for for uh, more and more communities. In other words. You know, hopefully we will move away from some of the standard models. I mean, venture capital is not going to go away. I don't think it should go away. Um, but I think that there um, needs to be ways for groups of people to come together and build um, 
essentially community power, right? And and one core aspect of that is is economic. And so um, I I hope that what we are demonstrating here is it serves, serves as kind of like an exemplar for future communities. And um, and I think you know there are going to be a few keys to um, making that happen. I think one, um, and this is something I'm thinking about a lot, is, you know, how do we help people outside of this choir to understand these ideas, right? To, to understand what they mean, um, what, what they mean, not just for themselves, but for their organizations and, and for society as a whole. And, um, you know, there's, there's, I think that right now, you know, we have essentially kind of like Pokemon cards um, that are getting a lot of attention, you know, people trading Pokemon cards and making a lot of money off of them. And that's totally fine. It's great. NFTs, I love it. It's great. Um, but like, that's kind of the thing that's shaping the opinion right now about um, Web3. And, in, you know, if you go outside of the choir. And so I think part of what uh, is incumbent upon us is to is to help paint this bigger picture of what what actually happened here right because it's very inspiring and once that once people start to understand that outside of this circle um it will start to draw people to 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 listen and to look at what actually happened here and um so i think and, you know and then then there are a bunch of other things that need to happen too but i think that's that's really the first that's the first step Thank you, uh, Gideon, for shedding light on that. Uh, uh, YGG, from a token engineer point of view, how do you see the design patterns uh, that was utilized during this common upgrade? Um, how do you see these standards changing over time? Yeah, great question. That's really exciting. I, I think the value that a lot of people see in sort of Web3 and DeFi and token engineering is this concept of what you might call money Legos, but that's that's really for DeFi. What we're talking about here is almost like governance Legos, um, money Legos, governance Legos, cultural Legos, and that's the sort of higher dimensional space that we're escaping into uh, out of the traditional, which is very linear. You know, you think when, when I was a kid, or, you know, the, the common paradigm of Western society is like, get a good education, get a good job, work a long time, work your, work your way up, and you'll have a great retirement, right? It's, it's a line. It's a straight line. But we're escaping into these higher dimensional potentials where we can actually recompose all the primitive structures that we have access to. And I think the commons upgrade serves really well in, I mean, it leaves behind such a legacy of documentation, of open source code, of all of the video recordings. Like, it's such a rich bed of literature that can be studied for so long and can offer insights to anyone, all of posterity, anyone who comes along in the future, no matter where they are in the world. If they have access to the internet, they can watch the YouTube videos, they can see how we did it, and they can redo it for themselves. So, in addition to just like the pure technology of, of what we really put together, I think there's so many layers, the cultural layers, the educational layers uh, that serve people, will serve people so much in, in re uh, replicating this work in the future for their communities and also uh, building on this work. And, you know, we didn't just talk about it and we didn't just write code, but we actually did it. We put it all together and launched, you know, we, we dog fooded the model. <laughs> we, 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 we've got our skin in the game and we're testing uh, as we go and we are sharing our results and our every, everything is transparent. So good or bad, you know, um, win or fail, like flaw or succeed. Uh, we're sharing everything so that people can learn from any mistakes that we might make so yeah so if, I, mm -hmm. if, if, if i am to explain commons how commons upgrade would affect the economies we experience today that's like you said that anyone in future could just get to youtube mm -hmm. what exactly would be my talking point um wait sorry say that one again 
So you talked about how anyone could get, uh, in the future could get on the YouTube and watch all the process and understand that. So the question is, if I am to explain the commons upgrade or how the commons upgrade would affect the economies we experience today, mm -hmm. what would I say? I, for me, I would come to this concept of bottom up. And uh, this has been touched on a few times. Uh, Angela was definitely talking about this, but it's the ability if you are one person or two people or a community of people, if you're a passionate group of gardeners and you want to bring a new era of gardening to the world and you want to get together with your club of gardeners and you want to create an economy, you want to raise funds and manage a common pool and have a democratic voting system amongst your gardening peers, you can use this infrastructure to do that. And you don't need any permission from a government. You know, I, you have, sometimes you have to be careful with legal and regulation and all those things still exist. But this is very empowering from a bottom-up perspective. And I think that's, that's the key here. Thanks so much. Uh, uh, Angela, you're launching the very first ac academy and you're launching a certification course. Question is... Are we expected to see something related to a uh, commons upgrade experience out of it and as a course in the academy? Um, that, that's actually um, certainly something that I consider really relevant. So at the moment, I mean, there are so many things going on in the token engineering sector. Um, for example, we are ourselves super surprised by the number of registrations for this T fundamentals course. So um, I think the number this morning was after one week, three, more than 330 registrations. So obviously there are so many people um, that, and 80% of them are not in our database. So we don't know them yet. And still, They've learned about token engineering and they are excited about this idea of shaping, designing new economies and they want to learn more. And I think um, many of them are attracted by this vision of um, what about the public good and what about managing public goods globally. And um, I think... The Commons upgrade is a perfect example and also the tools, we, we haven't talked that much about the tools that have been built in the course of the Token Engineering Commons upgrade and that are now available to any community who wants to build their own economy. And I think that's just, we are just at the starting point of make this visible and accessible to many more communities in this world. And I'm particularly excited about the formation of global communities. Uh, since um, we, I think we have learned a lot and have been able to draw a lot from local communities, but the challenges ahead of us are global challenges. Now, what about coordination on this planet? What about uh, creating, protecting public goods um, across the globe? And, and here, I think it's just the starting point and um, we, we have so much value to share at the Token Engineering Academy, at TE Commons, and at Common Stack. So this is a, this is a, a, a great position to be at, and we should definitely now take this momentum together. Amazing. Could you speak more on, on the tools that we built in the course of the Commons Upgrade? Um, yeah. Um, I think, of course, uh, conviction voting, uh, the bonding curve, also the um, tools in terms of how to bring together, how to gather the community and how to share this knowledge, how to communicate. Um, then there are certainly um, more components that, that are available now through the Commons upgrade. Um, probably... Griff or Tamara can give us a better overview here. The praise, for example, the, the, the rewards for the contributors are another element. And this has been so super important for us now in the last three months for exploring how can we reward contributors who are building 
these new communities who are building the tools around it, who are kind of uh, start from zero and, and launch it up to uh, um, launching a token economy and beyond with all the challenges ahead. So I think um, there, there, is, there is already a great tool set. And of course, I guess we all see, okay, we need improvements here and we need improvements there. And big question for us at T Commons is, okay, what about um, the token itself? And, and um, how can we make, not the token itself, but the token as being, as representing the value of this community, how can we make this attractive and how can we get other communities, other individuals engaged in our community and um, being engaged via the token? So there, there's a lot has been built and a lot needs to be built still. We, we cannot wait to see all of that. And for the fact everyone in the community is running around this makes it such a huge task and um, I'm excited for it. Livia, let's talk about the, the principles to easily deployed in designing the commons upgrade and taking into cognizance some of the things Angela had just said. Well, um, we've we've been implementing Ostrom's principles, and and that is part of the economy design. So Ostrom has eight principles that are. Um, clearly defined boundaries, um, congruous between, between appropriation and provision. That is like how sustainable uh, the, the commons is. Collective choice arrangement, uh, that is uh, how participatory it is, like how people have access to decision-making, uh, monitoring, graduated sanctions, conflict resolution mechanisms, minimum recognition of rights to organize. So like, uh, why did you was saying having some type of um, legal structure and nested enterprises that is how uh, connected we are with uh, the ecosystem and, and as a whole and how projects are connected with each other. So I think especially in this point uh, of the nested enterprises, we have um, we, we have so many partners like the Token Engineering Academy, Longtail Financial, Block Science, Giveth, uh, the Common Stack being a partner of the TEC. So there's PrimeDAO. I mean, there's so many projects that make this ecosystem uh, so robust. And I think implementing these principles into the cultural layer they give the ability for us to have processes like this, like a like a collectively decided uh, economy, um, having people very close to like giving people the ability to change things that they are working with to have decision making power uh, in this space. So, um, yeah, I think it's been actually the first time that Ostrom's principles have been implemented in a commons and a, in a cyber commons setting so it's really exciting to see um a lot of things coming from it that are are really exceptional and that are working like like the commons upgrade all right thanks livia um in rounding off I, I want to ask um back back to you angela as a token engineer was there anything that surprised you about abc or conviction voting or any aspect of the commons upgrade as a result of the pram parties, especially bearing in mind the very first time you attended and the greater community's involvement? Uh, certainly many things. Um, I was surprised by the dynamic uh, of the parameter proposals. So seeing the different proposals, seeing that they vary greatly and then also the the iterative process in improving them and then finally um, have the voting on it uh, this was certainly uh, just a great positive surprise and um, and another one where I was rather surprised how I underrated 
the aspects here was making changes once you've established a certain or one, once you've um, had an agreement on, for example, compensation and then you try to change it, you really have to be very careful with, um, you know, careful with uh, what, what, because this is a network, it's not driven by technology, it's still driven by human beings. And uh, so you join a community with a particular expectation. We all know that people are super engaged and are passionate about this idea. And um, so I was surprised how critical it is to um, be careful with major changes because you have to make sure that you explain, be transparent, uh, get everybody on board. Sometimes this feels like it's a tiny change, but it really might matter to somebody else. And um, so it's um, yeah, about, yes, you have the technology, yes, it's maybe just pushing a button, but uh, it's, this has an effect on relationships, and uh, this is why you have to be careful, even in tokenized economies where we feel like everything is handled by smart contracts. Uh, there's a question here from Rohit Malaika. Uh, he's asking for communities that want to explore um, augmented bonding curve, what will be the one or two attributes in its culture that might make them a better fit or versus not? Yes, maybe I can try to answer this question. Is the question um, where and what communities uh, an augmented bonding curve would make most sense? Okay, so it, it, it was about communities that want to explore the ABC. So he's asking what could be uh, one or two attributes in his culture that might you know, make them a better fit or what would make them not a better fit? I think one of the things that I've learned about the augmented bonding curve is it's particularly well adapted for small economies, which you uh, intend to buffer from shocks. So large swings of price based on markets. And um, perhaps uh, that is, you know, there's been some discussions over at what, um, you know, at, at what amount of um, um, assets under the curve we should actually turn it off, or at, at what size of the TEC we should actually turn off the bonding curve uh, in order to benefit actually from those kinds of market swings because it's um, designed to sort of dampen that a little bit. Uh, so I'd say I'm also aware that we're a little bit past uh, the top of the hour now, so maybe I'll wrap it up quickly. Uh, and I do appreciate this question. Rohit, thanks, uh, thanks for asking it and being so interested in uh, ABC. Okay, uh, thanks so much, everyone, for joining this conversation. Thanks, Angela, for sharing your thoughts and you know, opening up the about uh, token engineering and thanks Gideon it's always a pleasure to hear you talk or uh, read your piece so thanks for sharing your thoughts with the community Livia thank you for coming on board we appreciate you and Tam thank you so much for joining thanks to everyone who joined us why Gigi thank you Vlad thanks everyone that participated um today's episode of the AMA it's really wonderful having you all thank you so much for coming on Thanks, Akane. Thank you.